we're going to take the rendering materials and lighting and take all of that, put it together, and start compositing some images together. The first thing we need to do is save a camera view because you can't really composite an image together if you're constantly moving things around or you're doing a bunch of renders and then you actually touch it and then it sends it off track like that. So there's a couple different ways to do that. First way is if you open up your document menu over here and you go down here to where it says zap link properties, you have a bunch of buttons in here. Now you can actually, you see where it says make character sheet, you can go ahead and like go to the left side here and again you can hold on shift to snap it to the left if you want to turn off perspective to get an orthographic view you can do that. And you can go, okay I want this to be uh, the left side of the object and when I hit left it goes to the right side of the object. It automatically marks the right side. So now if I hit left, if I move the object around and do whatever I need to do and then I hit left, boom, snaps to the left side. If I hit right, goes to the right side. Um, and I can do front, Here's front, here's back, and here's custom one and custom two. If I want to do like a custom back front three quarter and then a back three quarter, I'm I'm capable of doing that. And then as I touch these buttons, they're all stored there in memory. Then if I hit make this character sheet, it'll make a character sheet that just saves as a, a puts them all together into a PSD with an alpha. That is pretty cool. However, all I really need to do is save one camera view. So what I'm going to do is clear all, hit clear. And another thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set my document size. Now, by default, my document size right now is 1300 by 975, which is fine if you want to capture at that size. However, what I would suggest doing is capturing a little bit larger, just to give you a few more pixels to play with and make sure you're getting a de pretty decent quality out of ZBrush. And then you can always make it smaller in Photoshop later on or whatever program you choose to use. So what I'm going to do is with proportion turned on, I can hit double and hit yes. And now if I go over here to where it says zoom, I can zoom the entire canvas out. This isn't moving the object in and out like this. This is actually taking the entire canvas and moving it out. Now if I hit actual, that's going to show me the actual pixels. And you can go in here and you can model, but you have a lot of wasted real estate in your document outside of that little safe zone right here. So if you want to see all of it, you got to zoom all the way out. And now you can see the whole thing. So let's go ahead and position our guy here. There we go. I can turn perspective on. There we go. And we'll do like a three quarter view. That's fine. So one thing I can do is I can hit custom one. And then if I want to, I can hit save views and then I'll save this as a uh, zap link view VWS view. And I can always bring that view in no matter what I want to do. The caveat to that is if you do bring this view in, you need to make sure that your document is at least the same proportions as the document that you saved it as. So this proportion, it was a 2600 by 1950. If I go half, I can do 1300 by 975. And the good news is when I bring my object out and I do this and then I hit custom one, it's going to snap it perfectly to that document because the document size is the same. It snaps it to the object. And always remember if you have perspective on or off, that's really going to affect how your image looks. So just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and double that again. Hit control N, drag my object back to my canvas and zoom out so I can see my whole canvas and then hit custom one and I'm back to that custom view. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use the movie menu and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in the movie menu. I think I'll do like a turnaround or I'll get more in depth in the movie settings in a minute. But first what I'm going to do is take the movie menu and dock it over here to the left and I'm going to open up modifiers and timeline and, I, and the first thing I need to do is actually see the timeline. So I'm going to go to the timeline area and hit show and that's going to give me a timeline. Now again I have my entire document zoomed out so I can see the whole thing. So what I can do is I can actually set keyframes of where this camera is and all I need to do to do that is to just tap in the timeline and it'll go ahead and put a little dot there. So now I can move this guy all over the place and then if I just move this timeline slider it'll actually snap back to that camera view. If I want to set another camera view here, I can tap here and then uh, go ahead and set a camera view. And actually, if I move, it's going to snap back. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this and just drag it off the timeline. That'll delete it. And then this, this timeline will snap it back to this view here. So I'm going to move to this section here. And then I'm going to move this camera here. And I'm going to tap it. So now what it's going to do is going to go from here and here. And it's going to linearly, linearly interpolate between those two camera angles. So you can actually, you know, move to this camera view and this camera view. And in fact, if you do the right and left arrows, it'll actually snap to those views. So there's a there's a 
uh, tutorial I do where I take a skull reference, it's a side view, uh, front view, three quarter view, and then I take a head and I do, and I kind of position the head as the front view and the side view and the three quarter view and spotlight, and then I just kind of use the arrow keys to go between them and do a very fast uh, skull um, sculpting. Uh, so that's another way you can use this. But for now, what we need to do is just have one view saved in, as a movie timeline thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and position this here. I'm going to drag this off the timeline. I'm going to click again. And now, no matter where I put this thing, if I go up here and I kind of scrub through the timeline, it'll snap it back to that camera view.